In this video, I visit a butterfly house to take on another 15 minute photo challenge. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, you join me at the Earnley Butterfly House here in West Sussex for another 15 minute photo challenge. Now, I've got to be honest, I've never really photographed butterflies. And if you're thinking this is going to be a how-to on how to do amazing butterfly photos and natural history, it's probably not going to be that kind of thing, I'm afraid, because this is all about enjoying photography and trying something new. And coming to a butterfly house like this gives me the opportunity to do stuff that would be much harder in the real world. Actually, the only thing I know about butterflies for sure is if I step on one, I'm going to change the future of mankind completely. So. I'll keep an eye on my feet. Okay, let's have a wander around and see what we can find. Before I get going, let's talk about cameras. So I'm using my Olympus EM5 Mark II and I'm using the 40 to 150 millimeter lens, which might seem like the wrong lens for this environment. Wouldn't you want a macro lens? Well, the butterflies we're photographing are actually quite big, so that's not a problem. And if I had my standard 12 to 40 millimeter lens, I'd have to get really, really close. And these things can be quite skittish. So having a longer lens, being able to step back is definitely gonna make a difference. So one other thing I'm gonna warn you about as well is when we came in here, everything missed it up. The camera, the sensor, everything. The humidity in here is about 100%. So I've had to let my camera acclimatize, give it 20 minutes of just sitting around doing nothing. So everything inside has warmed up and I don't end up with images that look really misty and horrible. Speaking of images, there's a little butterfly just here, so I'm just gonna get my first shot. Okay, let's see what we can find. So being a butterfly house, they've got food down for the butterflies to feed on, and that makes sense. This is the easiest place to photograph them, but it's not particularly exciting. So rather than going for the easy shot, I'm just gonna try and find them where they've landed on leaves or even maybe flying around. That might be a challenge. Trust me, there are lots of butterflies flying around here. Let's just see if we can find some. So let's talk about depth of field. My natural instinct is f2.8, nice wide aperture, lovely blurry backgrounds, because the backgrounds are absolutely critical in this sort of environment. Trouble is, that's a shallow depth of field. Now, micro four thirds, I get extra depth of field. So f2.8 is almost like shooting f4, f5.6 depth of field on a full frame camera, um, which is great for this sort of environment. I get more depth of field at f2.8 than I would normally, but I get that fast shutter speed of f2.8. Trouble is, I'm not getting everything in focus, so I'm gonna try actually f5.6. Before it flies away, don't fly away. some of these bigger butterflies as well. It's quite nice to go in and get some tight detail. The 150 millimeter lens, the equivalent of a 300 on a full frame, means I can really fill the frame. Maybe a little bit of post cropping to do inside of Photoshop. Uh, but sometimes it's just nice to get the details as well as the wide shots. Back, this way, this way, come There you go, you see, butterfly on the floor. Don't step on the butterflies. The future is in your hands. So the obvious picture of butterflies, I guess, are the, the obvious ones where the wings are out flat or closed, but we've got the time here and the number of butterflies to find different angles. So in this case, I'm shooting straight on to a butterfly. I can find it, there it is. I'm focusing on the eyes, just like I would with a portrait. 
kind of seems obvious to me. Whether that's the right thing or the wrong thing to do, I just don't know. That's what feels right. And I'm going to bracket my apertures as well. Backgrounds in photography are important in every sort of photography and I guess this is no different to anything else. So I've got a, quite a nice little butterfly up there. Let me just take a shot and show you what I'm seeing. And I've got the, the roof lights behind it, but watch what happens if I just move myself a few inches to the side, recompose the shot, it's still there. Now the difference is I've got a much more interesting background, a much more complementary background where the original was just a little bit too contrasty, a little too bright. Both are great in their own way. I think I prefer the one with the greener background. Oh, there we go. 15 minutes in here was a great amount of time and judging how hot it is, 15 minutes was about as long as I could manage as well. Great opportunity to photograph things like this. If you get the chance to go to the Butterfly House, do take it up and do take your camera along. Right, let's get one of these pictures into Photoshop and see what we can do there. You can't really tell from the video you've just seen, but that Butterfly House was so hot and so humid. It was very uncomfortable to be in. I couldn't even wear my camera strap. It was that bad. Now I had to wait for 20 minutes before filming to let my camera acclimatise to the humidity. Whilst I was waiting, I saw other photographers come in with their camera gear, try and take some pictures and go away frustrated because everything was just a cloudy mess. And what I'm going to do is show you how to fix that mess. And this is something that happens not only when you're in that kind of butterfly environment, but anywhere where you go from hot to cold. So you could be going from a cold hotel air conditioned room out into a humid country, then you're going to need to know this fix. Now I'm going to show you the worst culprit, the first picture, the hardest one to fix. And this is what I started off with and you could see straight away I was in for a tough time. This just wasn't going to work. I knew I'd have to wait and get this sorted out. But if you can't wait, here's the fix. I'm going to come over to the FX tab here in Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop CC 2015 and beyond. And then I'm going to find the dehaze slider. And on dehaze, I'm just going to slide this along and as I slide it to the right, you can see how the haze disappears. And for this image, I actually think I'm going to have to go all the way to maximum, which is not somewhere I would normally go. Now, if you're thinking this is only a Photoshop thing, no, it's also in Lightroom as well. The newer versions of Lightroom have dehaze in the develop module, and it works exactly the same as Adobe Camera Raw. However, it's not quite a one-click wonder. There's always a little bit more work you have to do, especially when you use it this strong. So I'm going to change from the effects tab back to the basic tab. And then I'm going to find anything I need to change. Well, I'm looking at the image. I reckon the white balance is a bit towards the green end. So let me get the tint white balance and move that towards the magentas just to try and take out some of that green. Now, everything else is probably going to be a bit of personal preference, perhaps a little bit of the highlights. I can bring those down slightly. Maybe we can come to the shadows, open up the shadows a little bit. And maybe just a little bump in the exposure as well, just to kind of brighten the whole thing up. Possibly a little bit of clarity, just to see how that looks as well. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, it's worth saying, of course, this isn't a panacea. You really have to wait to get the very best quality. This is the best fix you can do if you find yourself with really hazy images. But compared to the original image, the fixed image is so much better. And it's an image that I could actually use. Well, there you go, 15 minutes at the Earnley Butterfly House. Absolutely wonderful, perfect amount of time, great opportunity to get some pictures, but also 15 minutes, I'm absolutely sweating like crazy. So that's about as much as I can take. Now, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.